Hello, YouTube Komodo Gaming here, bringing you guys another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today, we are back in the town. Now, I hope you enjoyed the little intro showing you guys as to what you're going to see here today. Uh, I had a lot of fun creating this stuff, and I'm really excited for today's episode. Now, we are over at the drag strip right now. I just wanted to show you guys the new sign. Yes, Thunder Valley won the voting competition for the naming of the drag strip. It won by a landslide. It wasn't even close. So, thanks to all who voted. Now, I'm going to set up another poll for the military base name. I've been looking over the comments, so I'll have that that should pop up in one of the corners. But anyways, we are ready to go over and check out all the new cool stuff in the military base. Now, remember folks, if you are enjoying Scrap Mechanic, if you want to hit that thumbs up button, it helps out my channel a whole lot. The support on the past Scrap Mechanics, uh, the past couple weeks, has been amazing. You guys have been so great. I mean, it's really been mind-blowing. But anyways, let's go ahead and head over to the military base. Alright, this is the military base. Now, if you missed the first episode of this, I'll post it in the description. It's going to go over the barracks, the wall, the tower, the jeep. It's got some pretty cool stuff in it. But as you saw in the intro, we've added a training course, a shooting range, and we have a couple of sweet F-16s out on the airfield, so we're going to go over that last. Now, first, we're going to go over the training course. And I figured, you know what? We kind of need this. Uh, we have the barracks over there, so it's like, all right, well, we need a place to train and a place to shoot. So we've got the training course, shooting range. Uh, Non-Newtonian built the shooting range, and it actually looks fantastic. The spider web on that thing is crazy. I'll show you guys that here in a second. But anyways, we're going to go into the obstacle course. Now, I don't have obstacles like the rope climb or the swings or anything because the character has no weight properties to him and he can't grab onto anything. So I did obstacles that you can actually do with the scrap mechanic character. So the first obstacle, you start here. This is like a hurdles. I think I spaced these far enough that you will land in between them each time. So you can't just like glide over the top. Uh, next is barbed wire. Now, the character can't go prone, so I can only do it where you can crouch and go under him. Uh, we go up this ramp here, and we've got these little stepping stools, or whatever you want to call them. You're going to hop down these. There we go. Oh, I kind of missed that last one. Next, we have a balance beam. Now, what that is below it, that's supposed to be like a mud pit or a dirt pit. Eh, it came out okay. Uh, we're going to have more balance beams here. We're going to go up this ramp. We're going to go over the top and down. Now, the next one is one of those big walls. Normally, you would have like ropes on one side. You climb up and get over the other side. But, of course, we don't have ropes and scrap mechanics. So, we've got big steps. So, you got to hop up all of these. And you're going to go over the top into the mud pit. And we're going to take a left here. Now this is like a, this isn't a maze, but this is more like a, a change of direction. Uh, you try to go through here fast, you've got two lanes you can choose from. So you come in, just kind of go through this and pop out the other side. The next one's another set of hurdles. It starts from small to big. The last one is a little tricky to get over, so you'd hop, hop, and you get the big one here. There we go. And the last thing is just a dead sprint to the finish, so you're already tired of going over all of these obstacles. You kind of have to sprint and make it to the finish line. Now, what I might do, I might put a clock up on this. I might have a sensor, and I, I'd have to figure out a way to hook it all together. I'd have to probably run a block from maybe that pole there over to a clock somewhere, and have a sensor that would activate uh, from one side, start up a clock, and then have another sensor maybe on the, uh, the finish line that would go off, and you could time yourself going through here. So that was the obstacle course. I think it came out pretty good. It looks just awesome in the background because it makes it look like a more complete base. Now in the center, we are going to put like an HQ and something like a, a mess hall. That would probably be in the last episode of the military base. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out the shooting range. All right, this is the shooting range made by Mr. Non-Newtonian. Now, I was actually building an outdoor range uh, while I was building the training course, and he messaged me and he said, I've built a shooting range. And I was like, okay, well, what does it look like? And when I saw it, I was pretty blown away. Now, check out the spider web. I was also really afraid that this was going to crash the world. That is a lot of bearings in there. All those little blue dots at the top, those are all bearings. So he showed it to me, and I was like, wow, this is actually really amazing. So I'm going to just stick it over by the training course. 
just makes sense that they're kind of together here. So anyways, we're going to walk in here. Now, keep in mind, you cannot shoot in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, sure, you can create a shooting device like a, uh, maybe a, somewhat of a cannon, a catapult, stuff like that, but there's no actual guns in there. So this is purely cosmetic. So you're going to walk in here. You've got a little storage closet here to the side. Little metal detector. They would check you in right here. And here we go. We're going to walk in. This is the range. This would be maybe where the instructors sit uh, back here, and they watch everybody... Of course, try to be as safe as possible. Uh, shooting ranges are, they're a thing. I've been to one and I, they're really loud. It's kind of chaotic. You kind of have to get your bearings there and it's just a place where they really want you to be safe. I mean, there's people watching you constantly there. So that's what this is supposed to be back here. The instructors can watch you, but say you're ready to step up to the line, you would walk into here. Now he's actually got targets in here and that's what all those bearings are. So you can see them, it's like a, a big arm, it's all crunched up now, but it can extend out. So say you want your target, and you can see the arrows here, say you want it to set your target way back, you can do that. And it sets back there. Uh, these all work, so you can set them at different, like, lengths apart. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of do it with all of them, and, oh, you see a little duck there. So you can uh, shoot them back, you can shoot them forward, kind of however you want to do it. I just thought this was really neat. It's just done in a really unique way. Uh, I haven't seen anything like this in Scrap Mechanic. Okay, so say you're done shooting all your targets. Uh, you need to go replace them or do whatever you might need to do downrange. Of course, it's got a do not enter on here right now, but as soon as everybody's gone, you can walk down here and say you need to get here. Like I said, replace targets. Do whatever you need to do out here. Uh, this is where you would go. Now, let me go ahead and give you another view of the uh, the spider web here. Those are actual, it's like a sensor, some logic gates. Uh, if I were to rip this open, you would see, like I said, a bunch of arms. And uh, the only collision that's actually happening is these things are dragging the ground. Uh, what's above them? I believe it's like a suspension piece. And the suspension piece doesn't have any sort of, like, hitbox on it. I believe it can go right through stuff. And that's, I believe, how he's hooked up the uh, top of the targets here. But yeah, that looks fantastic. I was going to do an outdoor range, and I might still do that. Maybe, actually, I don't really have a spot here uh, on this side. Maybe maybe even back there, we might do a small one. But I, I do believe maybe the indoor one's going to be good enough. Uh, I might set up like a training exercise. A lot of times they'll have like those houses, or they'll have a temporary building set up. And you'll go through, and there'll be targets uh, waiting in there. So we might do that. I'm not 100% sure, but... Yeah, I've got to complete the base on that, but other than that, that came out fantastic, and I want to thank Mr. Non-Newtonian for sending that over, because that, uh, that just really fits in the base here. But anyways, it is time to go check out the thing that I am most proud of. Let's go out to the airfield. Alright, here are the F-16s. I think these things came out fantastic for vanilla parts. Now, they might not be exactly shaped the way the real F-16s are. They might not be quite to scale, but I believe they came out fantastic. These things were a pain in the butt. Uh, with vanilla parts, you don't have much room in something like this, and I really, and I didn't do it. I, I would love to have used the, uh, Durf parts because he's got a one by one thruster and of course in vanilla you've got these huge thrusters and let me show you this spider web real quick that is what's on the inside of this thing and i would have liked to have been able to hide some of these thrusters but like i said i wanted to keep it vanilla for you guys that way if you wanted to go download this on the workshop you could do that but yeah these are really cool i had built a shell uh, mr non-newtonian came in here and he helped me uh, complete the back part and then we spent probably two hours trying to figure out how to fit everything on the inside and we tried several different methods uh, but ultimately I kind of came down to what I, I like to call it the moonbow method because that's who I learned it from and to the way to get this thing to fly you've got a ton of thrusters in there some of these are hover thrusters some of these are pitch up and down uh, you've got sideways pitch here on the wings You've got a uh, little sensor set up, and I believe it's right here. Uh, this is the all. So you have this pipe piece that moves over the sensors, and it'll activate the sideways thrusters to get it to kind of go left and right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, it's got a really fantastic looking landing gear. Uh, they do completely fold up into the body. I've actually added thrusters here in the back. 
Uh, normally on F-16s, you see the back of them, there's like one jet aiming out the back, and that's what the center one is, but it was not producing enough speed for me. Uh, this thing was having some problems. They would stall out a lot, especially if you would climb. It would just stop climbing, and it kind of just start to go backwards. Now, I have remapped some of my controls. I'm going to be using the WASD, but I'm also going to be using the uh, the arrow keys. I've got them mapped to the hotkeys. So, it makes it a little bit easier to fly. Of course, I'm still not the best pilot ever, so it's going to take me a little bit to get used to this. But, anyways, I think we're going to fly the traditional gray one. Now, this color here is based off the U.S. Air Force. They do these air shows. I don't know if that was an F-16. It might not have been, but I just love the paint scheme. So, that's what that one's based off of. It's got the little orange canopy. I think it looks really cool, but... I want to do the one that would probably see combat, and you've got this traditional gray, it's got a black tail fin, and I don't know what it is, a lot of these right around the cockpit have a, a lighter shade of gray, and I don't know if that's for a purpose, or if that's just the paint scheme, but that's what we went with on this one. But anyways, to climb into this thing, it's a little tricky, a little tall off the ground, so we're going to go like this, let's hop over here, delete our lift, and we are in, and this looks awesome so when you're ready to go here you're gonna hit the one key that's gonna lower the canopy now for those who want to see the cockpit there's not much to see here uh, you've got basically buttons in your face and all this other stuff uh, I had to sit the seat down a little lower than I originally had it I originally had it about a block up but the character's head was in the actual glass and it looked really funny at least here it looks like he's setting in the right position so once you've closed that you're ready to go here now the two key is going to make you hover and the three key is going to make you go forward. Now you're going to use a mixture of the WASD and actually I don't even think the, the W and the S really do much. It's really the A and D for the y'all. And then you're going to use the arrow keys. I've mapped them out. I'll probably try to explain that in the uh, description on the workshop. And you're going to hit the uh, up key to pitch up, the down key to pitch down, and the left arrow and the right arrow to roll left and right. And you want to use a mixture of the, the A and the D with the rolling to help you turn. So let's go ahead and get this moving here. I'm going to go ahead and activate the three key first to try to simulate a little bit more of a takeoff here. So we're going to do that. There we go. There's the uh, two key. We're in the air. And we're going to hit the eight key. And that's going to put the landing gear up. So let me uh, argue with Scrap Mechanic's camera here and try to get this thing flying. There we go. Uh, that's pretty pretty good. Alright, so we're flying here, and man, I really wish that camera would just follow the rear. This makes it so awkward to fly stuff. Now, uh, one thing I do notice with this craft, I experience a little bit of frame rate loss while I'm in the air, and I don't really know what it is. I want to say maybe, and just maybe, I could be wrong, it might be the landing gear. There's a lot of bearings in there, and I don't know if maybe it's bouncing around and causing that frame dip, but, uh... Nonetheless, it's still fairly easy to fly. Uh, we're going to make a pass over the town. There's the uh, town there. Now, I I'm really excited. Um, I do want to finish this military base, hopefully in about one more episode. But I also want to get started on Christmas. So you're probably going to see snow very soon in the town. And we're going to do a Christmas festival. Now, I might do it in the older town, uh, because the street setup's a little bit nicer at the moment, and it's got some older style buildings, and kind of where we did the, uh, oh, up, oh, up, oh, don't fall over, up, oh, here we go, there we go, uh, kind of probably where we did the, uh, the Halloween festival, which was really cool, but yeah, this jet came out fantastic, it's a blast to fly once you set up the controls, I do really suggest doing that, because it's really hard to keyboard dance on the number keys, opposed to getting to use the arrows. It just feels a little bit more natural. So, let's see. Oh, you know, I might try to... Let's try to pull off a flip here. I think we've got enough thrust in the back, so we're going to let it slowly climb. You don't want to pitch the nose up too quick because you can't go straight vertical because it's going to want to travel backwards because of the uh, hover thrusters. So, we're going to do that. This may or may not work. Let's go ahead and start to still climb, and let's try to finish it off here. Oh, this might be bad. This could be bad. Okay, let's try to counter that. Oh, you know what? I feel like if we would have had eh, a little bit more room there, maybe not a tree, we could have possibly pulled that off. Uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and shut those off real quick. We're going to get back into the air one more time and wrap this episode up here, guys. 
You know, it's just kind of weird because you can take this thing off like a VTOL. You just like go straight up and it's like, okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, but that's just the way scrap mechanic works when it comes to flight. There's no aerodynamic model, so everything kind of acts like a helicopter. But yeah, let's go ahead and fire that back up. Start traveling forward here. This thing is awesome. I love this. This is probably my favorite craft uh, besides my uh, my private jet. My private jet's still my pride and joy because that thing's absolutely huge and just the way it flies and how stable it is. That and my shuttle from a, a couple weeks ago. That was cool too. But this is a this is my first really compact flyer. So really proud of the way it came out. It isn't using any suspension glitches or anything like that. It's using just thrusters. So really happy with the way it came out. Like I said. But anyways, guys, uh, tomorrow we will be doing a viewer creation episode. Now, I normally do those today, but I was so excited about this military base and the new items we had that I decided let's go ahead and do it today for you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode today. Like I said, viewer creations tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of town creations, and I've been sent a couple really unique things that aren't necessarily town related, but I think they are absolutely awesome. I've got actually, somebody sent me a birthday gift, and by the way, my birthday has just passed. Uh, I know a lot of people were asking about it, and I was getting a lot of happy birthdays in the comment. Uh, it has passed, uh, so that is pretty cool. Uh, thanks for all the happy birthday wishes and all that, so anyways, that's gonna probably about wrap it up for today's episode. If you'd like to like and subscribe, everything helps my channel. All these items should be up on the workshop shortly. And we will return, like I said, tomorrow with more Scrap Mechanic, and then we'll probably have a new game on Sunday. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode, and we will see you guys next time on Scrap Mechanic. Thank you.